In this video we're looking at some slightly more advanced simultaneous equations and we're going to see how to solve those by elimination. In earlier videos we solved pairs of simultaneous equations like these. Now this first pair of simultaneous equations is really easy to solve because when we add these together the y's will eliminate. We get an equation here with just one unknown. We're left with just the x in the equation. So it becomes easy to solve to find x. And once we've found x, we can substitute that value of x back into one of these equations to find y. Now, I'm not going to complete the rest of this, but hopefully you, you understand what I'm talking about. If not, you need to go back to A19A part 1. Now, this second pair of equations is a little bit more advanced. If we try adding these equations together, what we get on the left-hand side is 8x minus y. We haven't eliminated either x or y. They're both still in the equation. So this needs a bit of adjusting. However, this one is quite easy to adjust because if you notice, we've got a 4x and a 4x. That means all we need to do is multiply one of these equations through by negative 1 to create an equation that we can add to the other one where the x's will eliminate. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. What we can do is multiply this first equation through by negative 1 and that will give me negative 4x plus 2y equals positive 10. Now I'm just going to write this second equation underneath this one. So that will give me 4x plus y equals 11. And now you'll see that I've got a negative 4x and a 4x. So when I add these equations together, the x's will eliminate, which makes it easy to carry on and solve the problem. In this video, we're going to look at more pairs of equations where you might have to manipulate one or both of them before you add them together. Let's get straight into the first one. Here we've got the equations 2x plus 3y equals 17 and x plus 2y equals 10. Now, if you try to add these two equations together, what you'll get on the left-hand side is 3x plus 5y. So you don't eliminate the x's or the y's, and that's not very helpful to us. Now, if you try multiplying one of these equations through by negative 1 and then adding the two equations together, you still don't eliminate either the x or the y. Now, in this case, what I'm going to notice is that I can multiply this second equation through by negative 2. By doing that, I would end up with a negative 2x, which, when I add it to the 2x, will give me 0, so the x's will eliminate. So, let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to start by keeping the first equation as it is, so I'm going to write it out unchanged. And then I'm going to multiply the second equation through by negative 2. That gives me negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 20. And now hopefully you can see that when I add these equations together, the x's will eliminate, just like I said. That will give me negative y equals negative 3 and that means y equals 3. Now if I substitute this value of y into this equation here what I find is that x plus 6 equals 10 and that means that x equals 4 so we have our solution set it's simply x equals 4, y equals 3. Here's example b. Notice straight away that if we tried to add these equations together, we wouldn't eliminate the x or the y. So let's think. Is there something I could multiply either of the equations by to turn it into an equation where when we add it to the other one, we would eliminate either the x or the y. Hopefully you can see that if you multiply this first equation through by 3 
you end up with a negative 3x, which when you add to the 3x in the other equation will eliminate. Pause the video and see if you can complete this example. Here's my solution. What I did first was multiply this equation through by three. The whole point of doing that was that I knew it would give me a negative 3x, which would eliminate with the 3x. I rewrote the second equation just as it was. I didn't change anything underneath. And then when I added the two equations together, I got 17y on the left-hand side and 119 on the right-hand side. Dividing both sides of this equation by 17, I found y equals 7. I then substituted y equals 7 into the second equation here. And if y is 7, then 2y is 14. So that gives me 3x plus 14 equals 20. Solving this equation, I found x equals 2. So my solution set is x equals 2, y equals 7. Now, I just want to make a very important point here. What we did right at the beginning was multiply this equation through by 3. And the whole point of doing that was to give us a term here that we knew would eliminate the x when we added it to the other equation. Now, if we really wanted to, we could have tried to eliminate the y's instead. Let me quickly show you how. What I could do is spot that 2 goes into 5 2.5 times, or 2.5 times. So if I multiply the second equation through by negative 2.5, I'm going to end up with a negative 5y. So what I'll do is rewrite the first one, keeping it the same. So negative x plus 5y equals 33. And then multiply the second equation through by negative 2.5. That gives me negative 7.5x minus 5y equals negative 50. Now, when we add these together, we get negative 8.5x equals negative 17. Notice we have eliminated the y's. Now, this is all mathematically correct, but I often find that students make mistakes more often when there are fractions or decimals involved like this. So I don't really recommend it. However, if you really wanted to, you can do it. There's nothing wrong with this. Negative 8.5x equals negative 17. That means x equals 2, just dividing the left and the right hand side by negative 8.5. And then we can take this x value and substitute it into one of the equations. I like the look of the second one. And if I do that, I get 3x, so that's 3 times 2, which is 6, plus the 2y equals 20. That means 2y equals 14, which means y equals 7. So we end up getting the same solution, x equals 2, y equals 7. But like I said, I really recommend trying to stick to multiplying through by whole numbers rather than multiplying through by decimals or fractions. Here's example C. Now, to try and eliminate either the x's or the y's, what I could do is multiply this second equation through by 2.5, because that would give me 2.5 lots of negative 2y, which is negative 5y, which would eliminate with that. However, like I said a moment ago, I don't really like multiplying through by fractions or decimals. Similarly, to eliminate the x's just by multiplying through one of the equations, we would actually have to multiply through by a fraction. That's not a whole number, and it's a bit nasty. So with this one, what I'm actually going to do is manipulate both equations. If I multiply this one through by 2, I'm going to get a 10y here. And if I multiply this one through by 5, I'm going to get negative 10y here. And those will eliminate. So that's what I'm going to do. Multiplying that top equation through by 2, that gives me 6x plus 10y equals negative 8. Multiplying the second equation through by 5, 
that gives me 35x minus 10y equals 90. Pause the video and see if you can complete this problem for yourself. Here's what I get. Adding these two equations together, I get 41x equals 82. Dividing by 41, that gives me x equals 2. I then chose to substitute this one into this equation here. So if x is 2, 7x is 14. So I get 14 minus 2y equals 18. Subtracting 14 from the left and the right hand side gives me negative 2y equals 4. Dividing the left and the right by negative 2, I get y equals negative 2. So my solution set is x equals 2, y equals negative 2. This last example looks a lot more complicated, but it just needs a bit of rearranging first and then some manipulation so we can add those equations together to eliminate a variable. I'm going to start by collecting the x and y terms on one side. Normally we do that on the left hand side. So that first equation can be rewritten as 3y minus 11x equals 6. So I've just subtracted 11x off the left and the right hand sides. And the second equation I'm going to write as 9x minus 5y equals negative 24. What I've done there is subtracted 24 off the left and the right hand sides. Now, just be careful here, I don't have my x's and y's in line. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the left hand side of the top as negative 11x plus 3y. These are equivalent. So if I make that swap, what you'll find now is that I've got my x's and y's in line. We're still not in a state where we can just add the two equations together and eliminate one of the unknowns. So you will need to do some manipulation. Pause the video and see if you can complete the problem. Here's what I would do. I would eliminate the y's in this case. You don't have to, you could try eliminating the x's, but I'm going to go for the y's just because three and negative five, they are sort of easier numbers to work with than negative 11 and nine. What I'm going to do is multiply the top equation through by five. That will give me negative 55x plus 15y equals 30. And then I'm going to multiply the second equation through by three. That will give me 27x minus 15y equals negative 72. Adding those together, I get negative 28x equals negative 42. Now, dividing by negative 28, what I actually get here is x equals 3 over 2. Remember, our solutions don't have to be whole numbers. So we can try as much as we like to work with whole numbers as far as possible during the working, but we might well end up with a fraction in our solution. Now, we haven't finished. What we need to do is substitute this into one of the equations to find the value of y. Now, I'm going to substitute this into this first equation up here. If I do that, I get 3y equals 6 plus 11x. So that's 11 lots of 3 over 2. 11 lots of 3 over 2 is 33 over 2. Now, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 3. That gives me y equals, well, dividing the 6 by 3 gives me 2, and dividing 33 over 2 by 3 gives me 11 over 2. And that works out to be 15 over 2, which is 7.5. That means my solution set is x equals 3 over 2, y equals 15 over 2. And remember, you can check your solution by substituting it back into the original equations and seeing that those equations are satisfied. I haven't made a big deal about that in this video, but always remember, you can check your solutions 
by substituting them back into the original equations.